<coughs> yes. Uh, glory to God. And I'm here to share my testimony today, the second part of my testimony. And, um, you know, what God has done yesterday, uh, I came out with my first part of the testimony, all for the glory of God. So yesterday when I introduced my family, uh, probably you all did not see my son, Hirushka. Yes, he was not there in that photograph. And my daughter, daughter-in-law, Lakmali, uh, they were not there. And this is my eldest daughter, Hirusha, youngest daughter, Dinusha. And my uh, son-in-law, the youngest son-in-law, even though he's big man, Chamara. And my little angel, granddaughter, Shihania. And then my wife, who has stood with me in my journey, Roshi. Uh, my son-in-law, uh, Sanjeeva, is not here because he is uh, outside the country office. Mm -hmm. And also my little grandson, he is not here uh, because it's very difficult to keep him. But uh, surely one of these days I will show him also in uh, one of the photographs. So uh, yesterday we discussed, I, I just said about, uh, you know, all about uh, God's work in our life. So uh, today uh, I want to go beyond that. Last time we, we introduced God about what he had done, uh, how I came to meet Jesus in the crisis. Uh, as you go along with this story, you will realize it had been a tremendous a kind of a, uh, a pouring of his love upon us, too much of trouble, too much of trouble. You will see as you go along this, the kind of troubles, you name it, I have faced it. But with all that, God has been so good and uh, we have been able to go through this. It's everything is God. September 3rd, 1989, I began my journey ultimately after meeting Jesus Christ in the Methodist Church of Indipad. And the, uh, the journey was fruitful journey is fruitful. So uh, after September 1989, I started going to church on a regular basis. Reverend Theodore Pereira of Dev Sosevava introduced me, inducted me in the Methodist Church of Ravatavata, Murutua. So uh, Reverend Elpo Fernando was, the, was the, the priest in charge. The church welcomed us into their family and we were very, very happily accepted by the church. The outside society rejected me. I had a lot of friends. I mean, almost everyone was a friend for me. All company directors, the big people were my friends. But when this happened, they really threw me out. Uh, it was very hurting in a way. It was uh, uh, somewhat a very a kind of a hurt feeling that you have when you think of and most of the hurt came from, surprisingly, in a way not surprisingly, from the people whom, whom I have helped them a lot during my good times. Uh, for example, without going too much of into detail, I, had, I took one girl from Muratua, trained her and put her into the company, groomed her up, promoted her up, gave her all the increments and she was in, in a responsible position. In fact, when she wanted to take a bank loan, I, I signed her as her guarantor. But the following day, the next day after she heard all these things, she was the first one to spread a wild a kind of allegation saying that, look here, this is how he has made money. This is how he has done all those things. And he just she just went on to town spreading all sorts of stories. Very hurting. Then another instance I remember, one of my good close friends uh, one time, uh, one day I saw him on the road. The moment he saw me, he crossed the road to the other side and walked. I remember the Samaritan, that uh, man and that priest crossed over and walked in the other side. So these were some of my experiences. A uh, bit hurting, very much. I remember my daughter Hirusha was just only uh, six years at that time. And uh, one day, I remember I was very broken, sad. She got into the piano 
and she started playing rejoice in the lord always rejoice in the lord that little chorus played by this little girl it is a, a kind of a mark in my life surprisingly some kind of inner peace came so you can see how god uses you know even a little child uh, in a in a mighty way in that situation even though we lost lot of our friends relations you know they just disappeared from the scene and they were talking all sorts of crazy things my wife was getting many anonymous calls uh, but we could recognize some of those voices last in us all that and some of the people who have had the uh, meal share with us but they were the people to go but we had a new family coming up with a new family coming up that is the family at devsu seva devsu seva is not a church but it's a congregation of all the christians getting together it was a community oh i have still i'm yet to see that kind of love in christian church or for that matter in any of the ministry it was christ love pouring in that place a new family everyone accepted you welcomed you i remember reverend theodore pereira lily shanti that is reverend theodore pereira wife you know how loving they were reverend nathri pereira the president elect of the methodist church his wife shamila and also brother prasad who is the present director of devsu seva and his wife joy and that entire community what a joy it was i pray that church will become that kind of a family to those who are really suffering in days to come i'm yet to see that kind of love in any of the churches or communities for that matter anywhere i, I believe reverend nasir pereira who is going to take over the 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 mantle of leadership in the methodist church will do something like that again to promote the church you need it i know i would not have survived all these 26 years if not for that love that was shown the care that was shown in devsu seva i remember my uh, little daughter uh, she was only just one year at that time uh, dinusha and uh, uh, that is uh, she uh, you know she was basically she was in the lap of reverend asiri pereira all the time and reverend mm-hmm. asiri pereira used to carry her so that was the kind of love they showed her today this girl uh, dinusha even even as i write this testimony even as i read this testimony uh, she is in crisis uh, you know she is both her kidneys have failed even at this moment she is on dialysis in the lanka hospital so uh, it's another new crisis i will talk about it when it comes uh, but uh, you know we know god is our healer god will do something amazing uh, after i started journeying with jesus christ uh, I, we thought that the things were settling down there was a lot of peace uh, the most influencing factor once again was my wife and their family my mother in law my wife they were particularly they were the tremendous difference i mean the whole world was somewhat stormy but they were very calm they just were praying that's all they used to go to church and pray at home they will open the bible and pray and my mother will always used to say there is always a silver lining on the dark clouds so uh, there was that kind of a atmosphere a christian atmosphere in our home and that was supported very well supported by the methodist church and also by the devsu seva in a in a way i cannot explain it you know uh, i was uh, i was uh, spiritually guided by reverend theodore pereira and reverend nasir pereira for my baptism and on the 15th of april 1990 easter sunday i was baptized on the river by the side of devsu seva by reverend theodore pereira and reverend nasir pereira by immersing me in water and i think i became a new creation in jesus christ as per second corinthians 5:17 and uh, my old was gone 
things change. Even though I was not a very strong alcoholic, occasionally I would take in alcohol uh, as a kind of a social drink. That too I stopped it. Uh, I was more in peace, um, doing prayer, reading Bible, attending church. That was my life at that time. Uh, actually, I did not have a solid job, but uh, my school went higher and also my little shop kept me going. You know, children were small. Uh, Hirusha was attending ladies college at that time and then uh, uh, we had to put uh, Hirushka. Hirushka first went to Bishop's College and when she, when he was admitted to Bishop's College, even though he's a boy, we admitted her to, uh, him to Method, uh, Bishop's College. Uh, there, uh, first of all, uh, uh, I was a Buddhist at that time because I was not baptized, I was a Buddhist. And uh, But thank God, God helped him to get into the Bishop's College, no donations, nothing. And from there to St. Thomas's. We thought St. Thomas's will ask for big donations. We were worried because we were not having money. But, praise God, the warden did not ask anything, any money at all. And he was admitted to St. Thomas's College. And later on, Dinusha was admitted to Ladies College. You know, even though we faced crisis after crisis, which we will come to know later on as you go on with this testimony, uh, we never failed to pay school fees. God provided everything. I also don't know how he provided, but surely God is my shepherd. We were not lacking on anything. Everything that was needed was provided. I never had the occasion of going and asking the school principal or the warden asking time to pay school fees or anything. Things happened. Things happened. The world rejected. The things were not really, you know, uh, blossoming like a rose, I would say, but I managed to keep my children educated right up to advanced level. The two girls at Ladies College and my son at St. Thomas's College, you know, even though without a steady job most of the time. We thought problems are over. So I was baptized and living peacefully then problems started coming again. The cases which are closed by the CID saying it's a false case, suddenly in some year in June 1990, after I got baptized, I get notices from the Colombo High Court wanting me to appear four indictments by the Attorney General on one complaint. Four indictments in High Court number one, Colombo High Court number two, High Court number three, High Court number four, on one complaint. There were changes in the police, CID, the DIG changed, the director changed, and the company was so influential. They had every kind of influence. They had all sorts of resources. Using those influence, they again revived the files, retrieved the files, and they filed action. And it was a kind of a shock for us, a kind of a shattering for us, but our faith was in Jesus Christ. I remember I went to the Usoseva and I told Reverend Theodore Pereira that the Colombo High Court, they have filed four indictments. Reverend Theodore Pereira shouted, praise the Lord. I could not understand what he said at that time, but now I know what he said. All glory to God. He, he, he shouted and screamed, praise the Lord, when I said there are four cases coming against me. So, uh, we had to find lawyers. It was very tough to find a lawyer because the company has retained almost all the senior lawyers, even though there were no necessity because the Attorney General was persecuting me. But they have retained all the big lawyers to ensure that I will not have a good lawyer to defend me. So, surely I did not have money to pay to the lawyers, but, uh, you know, we found a lawyer, a Buddhist man, uh, for a fairly reasonable sum, I would say, as a fee. So, he agreed to, uh, to, to, to proceed with my cases. But he said, the psycho cases, you have to 
keep a minimum of 50,000 bail uh, every uh, the, the moment the case is called up. So I said severely, I don't have that kind of money. Then he said very sorry, in that case you may have to spend time in the remand because the charge was something like 1.3 million and uh, you know the judges will definitely ask kind of at least a minimum of 50,000 bail. So I said all right, we go trust in God. Uh, he didn't uh, under he he could not understand that kind of a thing because he was a Buddhist. So first case came up, went to courts. I carried my Bible. Of course, I must mention my brother-in-law, that is Roshani's uh, uh, brother Nalin. Yesterday you would have seen him in the picture, uh, who celebrated 25 years. Young man, he stood with me like a rock. Every day he used to come with me to courts, Colombo High Court. Virtually every day I was in Colombo High Court because court number one, court number two, court number three, court number four. So the case was called up in the first court on the first day and I got, got into the dock and the judge orders 50,000 bail but no cash, personal bail. It's the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I signed and came back and in fact the lawyer was astonished. He said, I don't know. Normally this judge asks 50,000 cash bail, but I don't know. Anyway, that's all right. Second case came. Again, no money. I gone. I went, got into the dock, 50,000 personnel bail. So that was also all right. Third case came and that particular day, Reverend Theodore Pereira and Dili Shanti came into our place early morning. Actually, you know, every day before the cases, they come or either Reverend Asiri Pereira will come or we will go to the Uso Sevava and they will pray with us. Amazing love of God. And the old couple, they came walk into our place. Probably about two kilometers, I think they walked. No vans, no cars, they walk early morning. And he comes here to my place before I go to court. He prays with me and then he places an envelope, an envelope on my hand. And he says, Kuma, keep this. As soon as they left, I opened it. I was impatient. 5,000 rupees in hand. So that was big money, 1990. I carried that money and went to courts. And will you believe it, my brothers and sisters, that judge orders 5,000 cash bail. 5,000 cash bail. I simply could not believe. I had 5,000 in my hand. So I gave it to my brother-in-law. He paid 5,000 and I was out. Fourth case again, 50,000 bail, but no cash personal bail. So you can see, you know, how God works. Reverend Theodore Pereira comes and gives me 5,000 on that particular day, exactly that day, the judge is asking 5,000. This I'm not talking of 2,000 years back, my dear brothers and sisters. 25 years, 26 years back, how God really worked in my life. And that is how it happened. And it so happened, uh, the cases well, then after that, it was a uh, couple of occasions, it was called up till the documentation was right, everything. So my lawyer appeared uh, going up. We were very worried about all these four cases and how to manage it. But they also save our, they, they backed us with a lot of prayer and support. Um, they used to have night vigils for us. They used to have prayer meetings for us. They take our family and, you know, that was the kind of support that came from those who were I Never I experienced that kind of love, support anywhere for that matter in any church, any community so far since then. So uh, during the, then uh, it, it happened, uh, you know, when the cases came up, my Buddhist family members, my, my you know, the relations, they said, ah, there he changed the religion and now see what has happened to him. Honestly, I never changed a religion. I have the deepest respect for Buddhism. But 
what I did was I came into a deep relationship, not a religion, with Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ was real for me and is real for me today also. So, uh, early 1991, the cases started coming up for trial. And at that very same time, my son, Hirushka, who was just about six years old at that time, now he's a big man, right? you can see him, he's a very big man now, he's working at Standard Chartered Bank, but my, uh, he uh, had a, a kind of a nasty accident in a way, uh, in the school van, uh, he has gone and knocked his head against the, the, school, the van bar, and uh, next thing what we knew was he was vomiting, and he was, uh, you know, he said, uh, he can say two armies, two tartis, basically double vision. We took her to a doctor, we took him to a doctor, and the doctor said, it's bad, double vision, you may have to take him to uh, govern uh, the foreign hospitals. So by that time, my passport was the CID, uh, with the courts, so I could not travel, neither we had any money at that time. So it was again kind of trouble. So he was admitted to the Erdens Hospital um, and doctors were doing certain things but he was not responding. One day Reverend Asiri Pereira came to the hospital and he told all of us to just to move away. He spoke to this little child of six years old and uh, asked, uh, asked him uh, certain questions and whether he's angry with anyone. He has told, yes, he's angry with the chairman of the company where I work. Probably he had not even seen this chairman, but he was angry with the chairman because he said uh, that father is suffering, that is me, is suffering because of the chairman of the company. And, uh, uh, you know, he was uh, somewhat uh, kind of uh, in, in anger mood. So Reverend Asri has given him a pillow and has told, you better hit this chairman as much as you like. So it's hit, 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 hit all over the place with the pillow. And later on, the, the Reverend Asri has asked him, can you forgive him? So with some kind of a reluctance, he has forgiven the chairman with a little prayer. Praise God. Next morning, the doctor comes and the doctor says, the double vision is gone. Hallelujah. Yes. My dear brothers and sisters, a little child had some kind of a anger and that was creating some problem. The moment he forgave, it was gone. Next day he was discharged. We were told that he has to go to various surgeries, this, that and the other. But here, God healed him. So this was the first experience we had of God healing our little son at that time. And not only that healing brought glory to God, there was another young boy in the church uh, with a brain tumor and the doctors have basically told him that he will not live long. In fact, the doctor, a very specialist doctor has told, you don't need to come next time because you are not coming, by that time you will be dead. So, with this experience, Reverend Asir Pereira and I took this young man into the same doctor who treated Hirushka. And all glory and praise to God. This young man who was pronounced death sentence 27 years back, 24 years back, surely, he's still living. He's still living. All glory to God. That little boy's testimony of forgiveness, healing, brought a kind of a healing, a restoration of life for another young man who is still living, who would have been dead and gone 27 years back. So, my dear brothers and sisters, this is our God. This is our Jesus. He is so faithful. You will have problems. You will have problems in the world. But our life will never be a stumble because God is going to build us. So, this is my second part of the testimony. I will be sharing this in little, little stories all over and I'm sure 
you will be strengthened with all these things because a lot more to hear uh, since after this you will hear many other things the troubles we have gone through but also the love of God in a mighty way thank you God bless you till we meet again